Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you much for joining us again. Going to be having a conversation with Dr. Ed Baker, Senior Director of Medical Affairs, Cervical Cancer Solutions at Roche Molecular Diagnostics. And he's joining us here to talk about some advanced biomarker technology that provides evidence and insights that simplify testing for cervical cancer. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Baker. Hi, thanks, Neil. Give us a bit of your uh, professional background, which I'm sure is extensive, and um, talk a little bit about your role there at Roche. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity. So, yeah, I am a board-certified OB-GYN, so I did my routine training, just like most people do in this country, Mm -hmm. in the um, United States. After medical school, went to residency program. After residency program, went into uh, into practice, and mine was a, a private practice in Northern California. I did that for about 10 years before um, I decided I wanted to change and um, I wanted to go into, quote, industry where Mm -hmm. I could start helping make the tools for the future of medicine and have a much bigger impact around the world than I could have in just a community with a single solo private practice. We're going to talk this evening uh, about cervical cancer. Women are are still being diagnosed with cervical cancer. It's a very uh, preventable disease, if I'm understanding correctly. Uh, we've got good testing systems in place. This cancer being missed, why are women still being diagnosed so prevalently with something that is so preventable? Yeah, that's a great question. At the beginning of last century, it was like the disease that women feared Um but we've really driven the rates down dramatically through cervical cancer screening efforts in our country. This isn't the case in all countries. Some places like Africa and India still have significant deaths. But in our country, we have almost 14,000 new cases and 5,000, uh, four to 5,000 deaths. So it seems like a relatively small deal, but that's because we do such great efforts with prevention. And this is um, caused by a virus, which we've identified, and we know how to screen. And once we screen it, we know how to prevent it once we find the precancerous lesions. So we're very good at that. The most common reason that it is missed and that people get cancer is because they did get screening in the first place. And then the, the second most common reason is if they get screened, then sometimes the screening in the past has missed it um, in some studies People who were screened within the last um, one to three years or so with a cytology test um, still sometimes would get cancer. So no screen is 100% effective, but now that we know that HPV is the underlying cause, if we introduce the HPV test as part of the screening, Mm -hmm. that that really, really helps um, with the sensitivity so that we pick up almost all the cases. Are there a multitude of different uh, tests for cervical cancer? Are there just a few? There are, well, there are a few categories of tests. And then Mm -hmm. within those categories, there's some some different tests that can happen. Mm -hmm. So there's the cytology test where you're looking at slides that come from a sample taken off the cervix. And there's conventional cytology where they've smeared them onto the cervix, sprayed them with a fixative and look. And then there is liquid-based cytology where you're using machines to make the slides. And there's in the United States, there's two main companies that do those, but outside the U.S., there's some others as well. And then there's the HPV test, which is common in our country too, and there's several manufacturers that offer HPV tests around the world. In our country, there are a limited number and only two tests that are actually um, approved for HPV by itself screening. But in our country, most of the screening is done by co-testing and so then there's a few other offerings that also can be done for co-testing. Now, what is the value of biomarker technology when it comes to cervical cancer testing? Uh, we were going to talk about some advanced biomarker technology that offers a little bit of insight that simplifies conventional testing. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And, and now we're talking about there's a new offering on the market that really relies on the, um, marker technology. The biotechnology, biomarker technology really is aimed at using things that are inside the cell that you target. So the cell is making different proteins, and you can stain to identify them. And by being able to do that, you can tell what the cells are actually doing. And um, it's much easier to see. They're much more objective than the old cytology, um, which takes extensive training and practice. And there's, there's a lot of subjectivity to deciding, is this really abnormal or is this kind of a variation of normal? And people debate it. But with biomarker technology, you can actually simplify the test and make it much less 
subjective and, and have a lot more confidence in what you're doing. In your opinion, what's the most critical need that exists when it comes to reducing cervical cancer risk? So right now we identify cervical cancer risk. And so the most important thing is getting patients into screening in the first place. And then once you have them screened, um, then you need to have um, very high sensitivity of the test in order to be sure Mm -hmm. that if they're negative, they're really safe. Um, That allows you to um, extend your screening intervals and not have to have women come every single year, which is quite difficult and burdensome on the women. Mm -hmm. But um, if you have a highly sensitive test, then you can be very, very comfortable that if the test is negative, you are off the hook. And that's probably the most important thing. The problem is Um, HPV, which is the most sensitive test we have right now, HPV is a condition that happens in a lot of women and it doesn't always lead to cancer. So now you need to sort out of those who are positive, who do you actually have to worry about and who can you let the body heal on its own? And that's where these new tests are aimed at is trying to help you figure that out. We're using cytology mostly for that. And if you have an HPV positive and your cytology is positive, that means that there may be something going on, um, and so now you have to be a little bit more concerned. But as we talked about cytology earlier, it's possible that cytology could even miss it at this stage. So using biomarkers can help you get much more accurate um, and really um, be much more confident in what you're doing and give the patients um, confidence that, that the advice you're giving them is very good. As far as uh, traditional treatment for cervical cancer goes, does this biomarker technology offer any benefits as to the type of treatment and the outcome? Um, really, the, the biomarker technology is more aimed at the certainty in the diagnosis, okay. um, whether, whether you are whether you are negative, and the biomarker in the in the triage step is really trying to work to see is there transformation of this is is the virus actually transforming the cells and potentially leading to cancer, and if there's evidence that that is there, you need to be concerned about that. And if there is no evidence there that is there, you still want to watch this patient, but you can probably be a little bit more relaxed and give her time to see if this will go away on its own. So that's. It's really important to have that clarity in your decision-making. And then once you've um, taken the decision to look closer, then you need to do a biopsy, and the biopsy will give you a lot of confidence in what the diagnosis is and will lead you to the management. So the biomarkers are really more about being certain and being confident in your diagnosis and not necessarily of changing the management once you see it. Where can our listeners go online and get some more information about this technology and some more information about uh, Roche Molecular Diagnostics? Probably the best place to go is a website called cervicalcancerscreening.com. Now, cervical cancer is all one word, C-E-R-V-I-C-A-L-C-A-N-C-E-R dash screening, S-C-R-E-E-N-I-N-G dot com. And on there, they do discuss a lot of this biomarker technology that is new. It's actually a game changer for clarity and helps us um, really uh, as we're trying to drive cancer to full eradication. And this is something that we are on the verge of doing over the next couple decades. Well, thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Dr. Baker. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.